Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate, JJ. So today is uh, project three of the Matutronics 10-in-1 <coughs> kit. Uh, this project is uh, circuit number three, the diode experiment. So um, uh, we'll be doing our usual thing. We'll take you over to the booth. We'll put the project together. Once it's done, we'll come back over here to the bench and we'll have a look at it under the test equipment, including the oscilloscope and the thermal imager. So let's pop over to the booth, put this thing together. Hi there. So here we are in the, in the booth, uh, uh, looking at our, um, our, our project uh, lab. Now, um, I suppose first thing first, we might as well pop you over to the uh, to the book cam and let's have a look at the uh, the manual. So this is circuit number three, the diode experiment. This simple experiment demonstrates that a diode allows current to flow in only one direction. If you try to force current through a diode in the opposite direction, it blocks it. This odd characteristic makes the diode a very important component in electronics. In a diode, the anode must be made positive with respect to the cathode in order for the diode to conduct. If you connect the circuit shown by the dashed line, pressing the key will put a positive voltage from the battery through the lamp and onto the diode anode. At the same time, the negative battery terminal will be connected to the cathode. This, satisfied the, this satisfies the diode requirement, causing the diode to conduct like a closed switch, and the lamp will light on. Now reverse the connections to the diode and the lamp will go out. Use this circuit to mystify your friends. And here's the wiring diagram and the, uh, and the schematic. So let's just have a look at that there. All right, so uh, uh, we're going to be switching the, um, we're going to be switching the, uh, uh, the, the cables around uh, to demonstrate the, the, uh, the functioning and the non-functioning of the diode. Uh, it looks like there's only uh, four uh, common wires and then a pair of wires for, to try for each way. So uh, this isn't going to take very long to put together and once it's together we'll take it over to the bench and have a look at how, how it behaves. So um, we've got to do uh, eight, eight, oh here it is, the germanium diode, eight to 24. So eight to 24 is connecting the diode to the lamp. Um, so let's just put that in there. And then We've got 25 to 29, so that's 25 to 29. That's hooking in the uh, the lamp to the switch, and then we're going to go uh, nine to 26. So 26 and nine. Okay, so we're putting the key uh, into the door. Now we've got 27 to 28, which drops the the power button onto the to the to the power switch. And then we've got some optional connections here. Oh, I see, of course. So um, when we switch those around, uh, the um, the diode will, will uh, either cause the function to, the, the circuit to function or not function. Uh, I'll just use the longer wire here so that when it comes time to switch it around, we can. Um, now, I don't see any reason not to demo this to you just here on the bench right now. Um, we will take it, sorry, uh, in the booth here where we are. Um, we'll take it over to the bench, of course, and look at it as well. But uh, this, uh, this, this should, should uh, uh, be pretty easy to demo. So if we press the button now, we get uh, we get no um, no no light on. So um, we've connected the um, the diode the wrong way around. So if we switch the the wiring to the diode and we press the button, oh dear. Well, that certainly isn't what we were planning to see, is it? Strange. All right. Well, let's just take the diode out of the equation and see if the light comes on. It doesn't. So we must have either a dead bulb or a dead battery or a dud connection there we go so uh i wonder what the the cause of that is there it is that that uh that connection doesn't seem to be sound so let's try let's try that again all right there we go all right that's working so let's uh let's put the the diode back in and okay there's nothing there and then if we switch this around Yeah, it works. But you can really see the uh, the the voltage drop across the uh, across the diode is uh, considerable. The the bright is the brightness of the of the um, of the globe is like considerably diminished. Look, that's full brightness, and that's uh, much lower brightness, isn't that? Because of the voltage drop across the uh, diode. Fascinating. So you can see that there. We'll obviously get a better view of that when we put it under the scope, which we'll go and do now. So uh, that's a that's a successful construction. We'll jump over to the bench and have a look at this thing. Okay, here we are on the bench with our circuit. Now, as you can see over here, I've already switched out the battery for the power supply. The power supply, of course, is here. Uh, we can turn him on and off. Uh, he set it at nine volts, so the voltage there is ready to go. Uh, put you back over onto the bench. Um, let's hit power, so power on. Now, um, again, you'll notice the brightness was not particularly bright, and then we uh, take the diode out of the equation. Uh, the, the light bulb's considerably brighter in that circumstance. Um, so, uh, 
let's see what the um, what the thermal imager has to say about that in just a second. But first, I wanted to tell you a few things and look at a few things. So, uh, I was uh, playing around with this guy, and I'll just turn the power off there while we tip him over. And I discovered there's actually a resistor hooked in uh, on the bottom of this board between the uh, uh, between the globe, the lamp, and one of its uh, terminals. So they've snuck a, a resistor in there. Now I had a look at it, and it looks like it's red, brown, black, which means that it's 21 ohms. Um, but um, we can certainly crack the uh, um, some sort of a meter to, to, to tell us about that. Um, let's try uh, this guy. This is the uh, UniT UT116A, which is a SMD tester, circuit mount device tester. But basically, it's a component tester, and it, it should be able to uh, give us a reading. So it's on scan. So let's put it on scan, and let's put it across that... Uh, Oh, oh, yep, there's a hold button. So let's put it across there and hold. And that says 27.1 ohms. So um, the the uh, uh, 21 ohms is pretty close, isn't it? Let's do it. Let's give him one more reading. And across we go and hold again. Oh, no, we've got an open line. Let's uh, put him on and hold. 27.2. So it wants to tell us 27 uh, when we measure it. Uh, the spec says 21, um, which sounds about right, doesn't it? So uh, put him back together and we'll turn him off. Now, um, why wouldn't we throw him under our component tester here as well? So we're just uh, just uh, sussing out this uh, <coughs> resistor, trying to get an idea of uh, what its rating is. Um, let's try and get him on that side. He doesn't really want to go in there. I'll, I'll I'll just put I'll just touch this on manually. So let's uh, turn this guy on, and we'll put him in, in component tester mode, and let's just push him onto there, and hit go. It's testing. This says it's a Zena diode. <laughs> Uh, that 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 just can't be right. I uh, I think we must have um, so we must have just used the wrong holes here. So let's use one, two, and three. One, two, and three, and hit OK. Resistor twenty seven point three ohms. So uh, we've got two readings, twenty seven ohms. Um, this is uh, gold, which is. Uh, uh, five percent tolerance, so it's a bit out of spec actually. But I, I believe two two um, two different bits of equipment have given us a reading uh, of twenty seven ohms. So it looks like they've put a twenty seven ohm uh, resistor in series with the lamp. So that's just something to know about. Also, uh, the lamp uh, twists into place, so it can come loose if you're not careful. Let's just put those back up there right now. Um, <clears throat> while we've got our component testers out, uh, let's have a look at this uh, germanium diode and uh, and see what we can see uh, with that. Now I'm just going to take uh, I'm going to take the the um, the wires off it so there's nothing interfering with our experiment and I'm going to put uh, the red on the anode um, and then I'm going to put the black on the cathode and then I'm going to hit test and it's going to tell us what this is. It's just a diode with a forward voltage of 0 0.6 volts. Now that's got to be quite wrong because uh, it's a germanium diode and it should be more like 0.3 maximum 0.4. Usually germanium diodes are in the range 0.1 to 0.3 um, so uh, I'm not quite sure what we're looking at here. Anyway, let's reverse the polarity and just see what it uh, what it figures about that. Okay, it still wants to tell us that the forward voltage is 0.59 volts, um, uh, and the IR is uh, uh, 4.6 microamps. I don't know what the IR is. It's some sort of current. Is it the reverse or R for reverse? I'm not sure. Um, let's put him back around the other way, which is uh, you know the quote unquote correct way, um, and. Well, it, does, it doesn't matter. This thing figures it out either way. And we get the same reading. So it's a forward voltage, 0.6 volts, and the IR is 4.6 microamps. So I'll, I'll look up IR later and see if um, we can figure out what that is. Um, so that's that's one lot of readings from the uh, Finercy uh, DSOTC3, which is actually a pretty cool piece of equipment. Um, and I, I'm just beginning to learn how to use it, frankly. Um, and the other bit of equipment we have is the uh, is the SMD tester, which we used to test the uh, resistor earlier. So let's put him back on. And let's put him across the... Uh, so he's in scan mode, which is what, what, what we want. And put him on there and hold. Oh no, I pressed hold too late. All right, let's put him on there. What's going on? Okay, he's on auto, uh, but he's on auto. No, no, scan. Okay, we've got him on scan. Let's see what he does. I seem to have a good connection. There we go. 0 0.371. Can you see that? 0 0.37. So that's a, that's a much better forward voltage, isn't it, than, than we were getting off the Finercy. So this guy says 0.37, uh, which is closer to what we'd expect. As I said earlier, a germanium diode should be in the range 0.1 uh, to 0.3. Uh, this is saying um, 0.37. Uh, the Finercy says 0.6 for the forward voltage, uh, which doesn't seem quite right. And I've got another component tester here. And I guess, uh, th does the multimeter have a diode mode? It does. Uh, diode. All right. Um, 
what are we going to use for probes? There should be some probes. There's some probes. All right, well, we'll put that in there. Common and positive. All right, now, this is on diode mode. If I just short out the... Um, oh, there's all sorts of... I'll just bring that around there. I might as well show, flip, flip you over there. So we're going to be looking at the, the top bit of equipment, which is the, uh, the bench scope. Now, when I short out the probes, it beeps. Uh, let's turn the beeper off. Um, and if we short out the, the probes, it says that the, the forward voltage is like zero volts. Um, so uh, that's probably what we were expecting. Now let's put the, uh, the, uh, the positive end on the anode and the negative end on the, um, on the cathode. And there we go, we're reading uh, 0.24. So we're getting all sorts of readings, aren't we? We've got the Fenersi saying 0.6 volts for the forward voltage. We've got the uh, the Unity saying uh, 0.37. And then we've got our O1 bench multimeter saying it's uh, 0.24. So uh, that's quite a range of, uh, of voltages to be to be dealing with. Uh, not sure what to make of that, frankly. Uh, anyway, um, let's uh, jump you back over to the bench. Now, we've yet to put this under the scope. So that's what we're going to be doing next. Um, the first thing I want to do is just make sure that we're, we're looking at it the right way. Now, I think by this point, we're, we're uh, quite aware that the um, the circuit won't conduct when the polarity of the uh, wires on the diode is reversed. Um, so uh, let's keep it in, in the mode uh, where uh, where it's, it's actually going to function rather than inhibit anything. Um, and we're going to plug in our two, um, two leads. Now, I really don't know what to expect, so uh, let's just plug things in and, and have a look. Now, um, uh, if I put you over here, actually, look, one thing I'd like to do before we jump to the scope is let's just uh, uh, do the thermal uh, examination uh, with the, um, the, the thermal cam, which is uh, up here. All right, so we're going to have a look at the thermal cam. You can see my hot hands on the camera. What we're going to do is we're going to um, power up with the diode in circuit, and we're going to give it a good 10 seconds, and we're going to keep our eye on the temperature of the, of the, of the lamp. Now, um, the thermal imager will pick out the hottest point on the uh, image and label it with its temperature reading. So let's press the button down, and uh, let's give uh, uh, the, the circuit a chance uh, to heat up the light bulb, and uh, we'll wait for, uh, for, the, for the circuit to get hot. And it should um, point out the the heat of the uh, of the, of the lamp, hopefully. Uh, so, uh, what are we looking at there? That hot point is there. There is that. Is that getting hot? I'm not expecting that to get hot. That's a bit odd. I wasn't expecting that at all. That germanium diode is getting hot. Wow! Actually, it's getting boiling hot. Fascinating, I burnt my finger on it. Wow, isn't that amazing? So, wow, okay. Yeah, ouch, I burnt my finger on it. It's really, really hot. So that germanium diode's really hot. I wonder what happens if we put it in the other way around, um, where it's not supposed to be conducting at all. All right, let's, uh, let's put him on. Okay, so, so uh, yep, there's, there's no current flowing. Nothing should be getting hot. There's just nothing happening. Uh, so no current flowing, nothing getting hot. But when we, uh, when we put things the other way around, that germanium diode is the hottest point on the circuit. Isn't that just absolutely amazing? Now, it'll tell you how hot it is because it'll have picked it out. And it's fascinating. The diode is hotter than the lamp. That's amazing. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you is that the, uh, that the lamp, when it's brighter without the diode, it should be getting quite hot too. So, uh, but wow, that, that diode is still so hot from before that it, it took a while for it to stop being the hottest point on the circuit. And that light is now the hottest point on the circuit. Okay, wow, that's amazing. Oh, these are the things you learn when you actually do some experiments. I had no idea that the uh, germanium diode would be getting so hot. That's fascinating. Look, there it goes, getting the hottest point again. Uh, so that is, to me, quite amazing. Absolutely amazing. So, uh, look, uh, I'm really glad we took the time to throw that under the thermal cam because I had no idea that the, that the germanium diode would be getting hotter than the lamp. Um, and again, just uh, when we do that, it's drawing more power now. It seems like when it warms up, um, it draws more power because it's drawing 131 milliamps. Actually, as this gets hotter, the, um, the, the thermal properties seem to be affecting the, the things because as this gets hotter, it draws more power, which is quite amazing. It's drawing 1.18 watts now at the moment. I, I suppose I could show you that if I throw you over there um, and put you down there. Can you see that? It says uh, 1.18 watts. It's the bottom reading. It's that's below the amps and which is below the volts. Okay. So... Um, 
what we're going to do now is hook up our two uh, probes. Now I'm going to put yellow. Now, first of all, now I really don't know what to expect and I'm an amateur and I'm just having a go. But what I'm going to try and do is use this point, uh, the, the cathode on the diode and point 24 on the lamp. That's a single point and I'm going to make that our negative reference point. And then I'm going to put one probe here so that it's across the lamp. And I'm going to put one probe here so that it's across the diode. And then when we turn things on and off, um, we'll just see where the, uh, the, the voltage readings land. And I, I'm kind of, look, I'm hesitant to make any guesses because I really don't know what to expect. But if this has got a forward voltage of between, what, what our readings was 0.24 volts and 0.6 volts, we should see some sort of voltage drop across here in about that range I'm hoping to see. And then the rest of the voltage out of our 9 volts should come out across here. That's kind of what I'm thinking will happen. Uh, but I really don't know what to expect. And this thing has been full of surprises so far. So who really knows what's going to happen? Let's do the experiment and find out. Um, so uh, we've got uh, negative on this side, positive on that side. And then over here, we've got negative on this side and positive on that side. Now, of course, negative and positive, see that those negative points are actually connected together in the scope. So it's important that they're on the same thing. If we, if we had this the other way around, we'd, we'd be doing things by running things through the scope, which we wouldn't want to do. Now, I've noticed this already. Look at that. Um, let's just hit auto and it should give us two channels. Yep, it's given us uh, channel two, uh, which is the, across the, the lamp. Uh, that's just a plain flat uh, negative voltage. I don't understand why it's a negative voltage, but that's what it seems to be. Uh, or maybe the, the um, maybe if I put him there, oh yeah, he's at negative 102. Let's put him on zero. Uh, zero, okay. Oh, okay, there he is. So he's actually on zero. And uh, let's hit him. He's on plus 25. Okay. So let's put him at zero as well. <sighs> All right. Now, I can't account for that weird noisy signal that we're getting on the germanium diode. If you look here, um, the power supply is on. If I turn the power supply off, it didn't seem to have any material uh, effect on what that, that diode's doing. That diode, it, it's weird. It's like, it's like, it must be picking up radio waves or something. I don't know. Uh, when we disconnect the, the positive lead, that seems to have some effect. Um, and when we clip it back on, it just goes a little bit fuzzy, doesn't it? So I really don't know why. And when I press power on, on the uh, power supply, that didn't seem to affect it at all. Uh, if I take that out, yeah, there we go, that's the same thing. So, yeah, I, I don't understand. I think it must be picking up, I don't know, it must be picking up energy from radio waves or something. I really, I don't know how this is happening. Anyway, let's close this circuit and see what these two probe readings do uh, when there's power applied. Okay, so we've got, uh, we've got um, blue has gone uh, negative quite a lot and yellow has gone positive just a bit, which is basically what we're, we're probably expecting to see. Um, I wonder, can I put a uh, measure, add, uh, what do we want to add? We want to add, say, uh, 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 this is beyond my pay grade at the moment. Um, I think, I think that's good enough what we've done here. I'll, I'll have to uh, learn more about how to use this scope. Uh, and right here with you right now is probably not the way to do it. Um, but look, let's just close the circuit again. And you see yellow has gone up a little bit. Actually, what if we put um, measure, all measure, um, channel one on, and uh, we'll just turn him off and move him down here. Now, <clears throat> the all measure on channel one, when we press the key, we want to see V max, okay, is 3.3 volts, and V min is 1.4 volts. Uh, the average is 2.3 volts, okay? So that's what's happening across the diode, is... Uh, uh, 2.3 volts and if we close him and we try and measure all measure on channel 2 and hide him and we press the key this says minus 291 millivolts okay so that's that's what that is I don't know I, I, uh, I don't understand it's far more interesting now isn't it anyway it's all pretty small beer so, uh, I might call it a day on that one, um, and I'll just throw you back over here. I'll just turn that guy off. So, um, I, I, I don't think uh, there was there was really, uh, I, I don't know about you, but I, I kind of didn't feel like, um, like anything particularly interesting happened uh, when we had a look with the scope. I mean, there's no signals here, there's no oscillator, there's not really anything to pick up on the scope. Um, so, uh, 
yeah, I, 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 I didn't think that was particularly interesting, but it was fascinating to see the germanium diode get hot. I really had no idea that was happening. I hadn't picked up on that at all. And the other thing is, it was interesting to see how um, when the germanium diode's in the circuit, the, the, the forward voltage uh, consumes a little bit of the power in the circuit and makes less available for the lamp uh, and the lamp shines less brightly. And that was really quite noticeable. So uh, when the diode's in circuit, it chews up a lot of juice and it must have been hotter than the lamp. I mean, who would have thought? That's just insane. So, uh, and also we saw uh, that weird effect where uh, when the diode was just wired in on the, on the, um, on the probes, uh, on the, uh, the scope, that it was just picking up this kind of, you know, like voltage. And I don't know how that was happening because I don't believe it was coming through uh, the, uh, the power supply. So I, I, I don't understand that at all. It just goes to show you how much more I've got to learn. Anyway, uh, that concludes our, uh, our, our diode uh, experiment. Um, the next experiment, which will be in the next video, is the diode radio. And perhaps that diode radio will shed more light on what was happening with that, that little noise. And I have no idea how you make it a radio with a diode, but in the next experiment, we're likely to find out. So uh, I'm going to tie this one off. Thanks very much for watching. If you want to see the rest of the, uh, the experiments, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.